Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss rate of return. In this video, we will define the topic of rate of return analysis, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of rate of return analysis falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. When we sit down to make a decision regarding two investment opportunities, or assess our performance on past investments, it will be useful to, de to determine the yield to maturity of those specific investments. This yield to maturity is better known as the rate of return. According to the equivalence principle, the actual rate of return earned on an investment is defined as the interest rate that sets the equivalent uniform annual benefits, EUAB, of the investment equal to the equivalent uniform annual costs, EUAC, of the investment. This process is a bit unique in the sense that we will arrive at a rate of return using more or less a guess and check method. Luckily, the problems we will be given on the exam won't throw us too much for a loop, so as long as we know the general steps to deriving this rate, we shall be good. When analyzing two alternatives, it will be desirable to choose the alternative that yields the greatest rate of return. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of a rate of return problem is to determine the interest rate that makes the equivalent uniform annual benefits of the investment equal to the equivalent uniform annual costs of the investment. In other words, the rate of return makes EUAC equal to EUAB. We may be given a problem that requests that we analyze a single investment, or we may be given a problem where we are asked to compare two unique investment opportunities. The general workflow is the same regardless of whether it is a single or a multiple alternative problem. The steps are as follows. First, it is paramount to remember that the rate of return of an investment is the interest rate that makes the following true. EUAC is equal to EUAB. The EUAC of an investment will typically be the initial investment converted into a uniform annual cost over the duration of the investment, which is EUAC is equal to P, which is our initial investment, times A over P I N. The EUAB will typically be given in some form or fashion in the problem statement. However, it is given we must make sure that it is in an annual format. We can then set these two values equal to each other so that P times A over P I N is equal to E U A B. We will then be able to determine what the value A over P I N is or must be to make our statement true. Taking this value along with the duration of the investment N, we can then jump into the compound interest tables to determine which interest rate provides the specific value we are looking for. The interest rate will be our rate of return. So let's run through an example. An engineer places 1000 into a 10-year investment, and over that period, the yield was $150 annually. What was the rate of return on this investment? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine what the rate of return over the 10 year period was for the individual. The rate of return can be determined by setting the equivalent uniform annual benefits against the equivalent uniform annual costs and solving for the interest rate that will make them equal. Therefore, the rate of return of an investment is the interest rate that makes the following true. EUAC is equal to EUAB. A short explanation of the rate of return can be referenced on page 115 
of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook. The benefits of the investment are all already stated as an annual benefit. We will use the capital recovery formula found in the table on page 114 and reference the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook to convert the original investment to an annual cost that we can then compare. As engineering economic problems get more complicated, it is best to get comfortable using the functional notation version of the equations and referencing the compound interest tables as it will lead to a much more efficient use of your time. The capital recovery formula written in functional notation for a uniform amount per interest period is A is equal to P times A over P I N, where the term A over P I N can be defined using the given values for interest and the period, and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. The problem statement defines the period, but it is the goal to determine the interest rate. A different approach must be taken to compared to the other problems that have been worked to determine what the interest rate or rate of return will be. Again, the rate of return of an investment is the interest rate that makes the following true. EUAC is equal to EUAB. The equivalent uniform annual cost of this problem is P times A over P I N and the equivalent uniform annual benefits for this problem is $150. Setting these two values against each other, we get 1,000, which is our initial investment, times A over P, I, N, is equal to $150. So rearranging, we have A over P, I, N, is equal to 0.15. And we also know that the period is 10, n, n equal 10. So referencing the compound interest tables on page 118 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, relocate the period n equals 10, our far left column, and work our way horizontally to A over P in each table to determine which one has the value of 0.15. It is determined that the closest interest rate is 8%. So the rate of return for this investment is approximately 8%. A couple of things could go wrong when working a problem like this. First, it is important to ensure that when you are flipping through the tables that you have pay attention to the variables you are working with. In this problem we were looking for the value in the A over P column, but it is easy enough to reference the a over F column, or any other column for that matter. This would obviously lead to us incorrectly stating the rate of return. In the same vein, you could also very easily reference the wrong row, or value for the period stated. Finally, you may altogether forget to recall that the rate of return is measured as the interest rate over the stated period that makes the following scenario true. EUAC is equal to EUAB. Sometimes individuals will simply add up the total returns over the period and divide it by the initial investment and conclude that as the rate of return. However, this is not correct, a correct procedure because you are not dealing with equivalent costs. Remember, money at different points in time is not the same, therefore we need to use the formulas, tables, and other factors we are given to analyze these types of problems. Well that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, Type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. 
While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Boot Camp. 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.